extend a warm welcome to all of you who are watching from home today. Our celebrant this morning is Father Noel, and we remember in a very special way Arthur McCarthy. Please rise for our entrance antiphon. The Lord speaks of peace to his people and his holy ones and to those who turn to him. And I will 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowds, They will seize and persecute you, they will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or repute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives and friends. They will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. As we approach Thanksgiving, time for so much gratitude, putting everything in perspective, the readings that we are confronted with these last few days don't seem to focus on gratitude or appreciation, and yet, as we approach tomorrow's feast, it certainly should be gratitude, gratitude that wells up within us for what we have heard in the scripture readings, the Word of God, the history of our salvation, and what has happened in Old Testament times, in New Testament times, and ever since the time of Jesus, right up until now. Because of all of that, there should be gratitude in our hearts. In the preceding passage to today's Gospel is where Jesus is talking about the destruction of the great temple of Herod in Jerusalem. And even more things are to happen. Jesus is preparing them, preparing them for the persecution of Christians what will be difficult for them in the days ahead. But the words he says to them, that he says continuously to us, are heard 366 times in the New Testament, and that is, do not be afraid. We are not to allow fear to enter in, to prevent us doing what he tells these people listening to him today that it will be the persecution and all they will be confronted with, the hard times, that it will be an opportunity, an opportunity with, to witness, to witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, to witness to their beliefs and their desire to be faithful and committed to following Jesus, come what may, in pain and suffering, in hardship, persecutions, in the trials that Christians would undergo, Jesus was preparing them and also saying to them, don't worry, no need to worry about what you're going to say when you're brought before the courts, because I will give you the words, the inspiration, the Spirit of God will breathe within you and will strengthen you. So do not worry, do not be afraid. And when we think of that, we think of people, always the image that comes to me is one from the Old Testament, long before Jesus came. The story of the fiery furnace of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The three young men who went into the pit of fire, willing to die rather than betray their belief in God. Their desire to be faithful to the end. Think of even today the feast of St. Catherine of Alexandria, who at 18 years converted to Christianity, and she, there at that time living in Egypt, she converted the Empress herself by her witness, her words, her example, and the chief of the army, all of them, and because of that, she was beheaded, because she was seen as a threat. Yet she, young as she was, faithful to the end. 
I think of the New Testament. I think of Stephen, Christian martyr. I think of Paul. And think of the trials that they underwent. How challenging it was for them. And yet, they were faithful. Faithful to the end. Here we are, living surely in challenging times, not just because of the pandemic, but also because of the atheistic, agnostic, agnostic, materialistic, self-centered society in which we live. We are challenged to either conform to what they're saying or to be true to the words that are here. Now I think of God and the story of creation and what he said, all was good and indeed it was very good. And I look at the world in which we live and yes, there's so much good, but there's so much evil, so much destruction, so much division, destruction of our ecosystem, destruction of family values, destruction in so many aspects of daily living. We must ask ourselves, are we conforming to the winds that are blowing against us? Or are we allowing the wind of God's Spirit that breathes within us to nourish us and to strengthen us to go out of here every day and to bear witness? Because remember what Jesus says, you will be hated by all because of my name, even be handed over by family members. And I'm sure everyone knows somebody, even in your extended family perhaps, who may laugh at your beliefs or at our religion, Christianity, Catholicism. And what does it do to you? What's your reaction? How do we respond to those moments of challenge? Well, we who are faithful, whatever our persecution may be, we must be true to what God said at the end of each one. And indeed, it was very good. So that people see within us that indeed we are very good despite the trials, the challenges, the persecutions, the trials that will come along. Be faithful to God's word. Let God's word be seen through our witness through our words, through our actions. So we thank God for the opportunity we have this day to lead here and to witness, to witness to our beliefs in our words and in our actions. Let us stand and pray. Trusting in the love of our merciful Father, let us now lay these our petitions before him. For all members of the church, may the Lord strengthen us as stewards of faith we share. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For policy makers, may God give them fortitude to their efforts to defend the dignity of life at all stages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those struggling with illness or personal afflictions, may Jesus be their strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may God bless us with the grace to be his servants in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, May we find rest in Jesus' arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those persons whose names are written in our book of petitions and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, we humbly pray that you bless these petitions and answer them in accordance with your divine will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the prayer of the Lord, for our the Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself our gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew full, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my blood which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and 
with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In remembering the words that Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your Apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us acknowledge our willingness to be instruments of God's peace. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus our Saviour, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. I pray that you should have come to you. For we say the word of my soul shall be. Communion verse. Oh, praise the Lord, all the nations, for his merciful love toward us is great.
So let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a reminder, tomorrow we just have one Mass at 10 a.m. And nice to see a few of our seasonal visitors back again. Welcome back, ladies. Nice to have you back with your winter family. And uh, the Lord be with you all. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God, by the witness of your life today. Amen. And have a wonderful day. And the same to people watching us at home. We hope you have a blessed day and a blessed Thanksgiving.